biology students were on 10.2 Mendelian genetics. Mendel explained how a dominant allele can mask the presence of a recessive allele. And again, you're like, what? I don't get it. It's okay, you will. And this section, we're actually going to stay on for a little while because there's going to be a lot of practice with grids. Um, it's basically a Rubik's Cube or a puzzle, and it's very easy if you just learn the different terminology. So we'll be talking about that throughout the video. Um, but everything about mitosis, especially meiosis, and why we have haploids and gametes, um, that's all going to come into play here in just a second. So how genetics began. The passing of traits to the next generation is called inheritance or heredity. And there was this monk, his name was Gregor Mendel. He had like no life. He published his findings on the method of inheritance in garden pea plants. First, he cross-pollinated pea plants, which normally self-fertilized. And then he rigorously followed various traits in those pea plants. He began the study of genetics the science of heredity. So we call Mendel the father of heredity. So through his plight, one trait Mendel noticed was seed color. Some plants always produce green seeds while others were always yellow. So he crossbred the green and the yellow seed plants to see what would happen. He called the green seed and yellow seed plants the parent or P generation. That's a word you need to know, P generation. F1 and F2 generations also need to know those. The offspring of this P or parent cross are called the first filial or F1 generation. So if we just stop a second and take a look, the parents, the mom and the dad, are the P generation and their first offspring is what we call the F1 generation. So the second filial or F2 generation is the offspring from the F1 cross. So let's just stop here for a minute because this makes people crazy when they think about it. Guys, it's just a plant, okay? It's not weird. So basically an F2 generation is the offspring of these offspring. So if we think about puppies for a minute, we have a black lab and we have a yellow lab. And together, the black lab and the yellow lab have a bunch of puppies. And if this puppy were to mate with its other sibling, then this would be the result. That's what the F2 generation is. The F2 generation is the result of the first litter. Okay, so in Mendel's peas, the green seed trait disappeared in the F1 generation, but reappeared in the F2. And this gave us a ratio of three to one of yellow to green seeds. Mendel studied seven different traits. He studied seed or pea color, flower color, seed pod color, seed shape or texture, seed pod shape, stem length, flower position. In all cases, Mendel found the F2 generation plants showed the same 3 to 1 ratio of traits. Mendel concluded that there must be two forms of the seed trait in the pea plants and that each was controlled by a factor. Here's the words you're going to have to know. An allele is an alternative form of a single gene. The gene for yellow seeds and the gene for green seeds are different alleles for the same gene. Dominant alleles control the traits that appear in the F1 generation, while recessive alleles were masked in the F1 generation and couldn't be seen. When modeling inheritance, the dominant allele is represented by a capital letter and a recessive allele is represented with a lowercase. So an organism with two of the same alleles for a particular trait is homozygous for that trait. Homozygous, homo meaning same. So that means an organism would have two capital letters or it can have two lowercase letters. It's either homozygous dominant, capital, or homozygous recessive, lowercase. An organism with two different alleles for a particular trait is called heterozygous. Hetero meaning different or opposite. That would be a capital Y and a lowercase. In a heterozygous individual, the dominant trait will always be observed by the eye of the observer.
So in this case, if I say the dominant factor or allele is blue eye and the non-dominant factor, the recessive factor is brown eyes, that means this individual will appear to me to have blue eyes, although they carry and can pass on to future generations brown eyes. So that brings us to genotype and phenotype. You really need to know the difference. Geno, genes, genetic code. It's those Ys, it's the alleles we were just talking about. Phenotype, phenotype is pheno, physical, that thing that we can see with our eyes. So the appearance of an organism does not always indicate which pair of alleles it possesses. An organism's allele pairs are called its genotype. The observable characteristic or outward expression of that pair is called a phenotype. So Mendel went a little further and discovered something that is now a law, and it's called Mendel's Law of Segregation. It states that two alleles for each trait separate during meiosis. Now, if you remember, why do things separate in meiosis? What was the purpose of it? so that each sperm will have only 23 chromosomes and each egg will have only 23 chromosomes so that when they meet and come together to make a baby, that baby isn't like deformed and have issues and that baby has only 46 chromosomes, which is what humans have. So during fertilization, two alleles for that trait unite, one from a sperm, one from an egg, and heterozygous organisms are called hybrids. There's two different types of crosses that you will need to know a lot about. The first one is mono and the second one is di. Notice that's a carryover from our cells. Mono is a single cross. It's a cross that involves hybrids for a single trait and it's called a monohybrid cross. Di is the simultaneously inherence of two or more traits in the same plant. So if you're doing just one trait, that is a monohybrid cross. If you're doing two or more, that is a dihybrid cross. Now, the law of independent assortment can be shown in a variety of ways. And believe it or not, we need all those ways so that 100% of the population really understands how that happens. So first of all, what is law of independent assortment? Well, it's a random distribution of alleles that occurs during gamete formation. Genes on separate chromosomes sort independently during meiosis, and each allele combination is equally likely to occur. Punnett squares are your friend. They predict the possible offspring of a cross between two known genotypes. So here's the common problems I usually run in with students when it comes to this portion. They are like, I can do it in my head. Yes, yes you can. And I've been doing this for a while, and I'm 42 years old, and I can also do it in my head. But guess what? I make mistakes. So if I don't skip steps and I take the time to do a Punnett square every time, I will never make a mistake. It will be correct 100% of the time. And notice there's a lot of things that can go wrong inside of a Punnett square, from the way you set it up to the way it's answered. It's definitely worth more than just five points. It's not even worth one point. It's worth multiple points. So make sure you don't skip and shortchange yourself. Always use a Punnett square. Now, don't let this portion scare you off. It looks really busy, but we're going to be working with this a lot in class. So just stop holding your breath and breathe deep. Put your shoulders back down away from your ears and just relax for a minute. So let's take a look first at our map, okay? And that's how I think of it. Every map I've ever looked at has a key, and here's ours. Capital T, dominant, right? It's the ability to roll a tongue, and lowercase t is going to stand for the inability to roll a tongue. And so if I look at my parents, here I have a female, and her genotype for her allele is capital T, little t. So what would her phenotype be? Well, dominant trumps recessive. So this female has the ability to roll her tongue. The dad over here, he is also a hybrid or heterozygous for the ability to roll tongue as well. So basically we take the capital T and we move it here 
and we take the little t and we move it there. We're just splitting them up. That's it. We're using them as placeholders. Now, before I go any farther, let me make sure you understand a Punnett square with a monohybrid cross. That means one trait. The number of squares is determined by the number of different types of alleles produced by each parent. So since we're only looking at one trait, since we have two parents, there's four squares. The most important words are dominant and recessive. Dominant is the trait that's going to be seen. Recessive is a trait that's often masked. In this case, we're going to use the color of pea pods, yellow being the dominant trait and green being the recessive trait. For dominant traits, we're going to use a large Y. For recessive traits, we're going to use a little Y. As a review, homozygous means the same. Heterozygous means different. Now, before she goes on any further, I will tell you, um, there are certain letters like W, M, S, Y. They can kind of look the same. I'm not going to look that closely. I can't. I'm, I have old eyes. You really need to do a better job than what she did. I mean, this could look really like this, especially if your tail's kind of not so fancy. Okay, so a Y should be really pronounced if it's dominant. And it should be really tiny if it's not dominant. So make sure you make a conscious decision to visually show me that difference. Because if you have to explain it to me, you didn't explain it well enough the first time. So let's go through one of the examples. Let's say we have two heterozygous adults. We're going to put the large Y up here and a small Y for one. For the other one, we're also going to use a large Y, small Y, since they're heterozygous. In order to do this, the easiest thing to do is for, to start at the top and to write the big Y all the way down for this one. On this side, just write the small Y for both of them. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, except we're going to follow it across. So a large Y here and a large Y here. On this side, a small Y and a small Y. Down. Now, you can go through and look at this. We have one large Y, large Y. We have two with a large Y, small Y. And we have one with a small Y, small Y. We know that the dominant is yellow. and the recessive is green. So as long as there's one large Y here, this one has to be yellow. This one also has a large Y, so this one is yellow as well. Two small Ys, there is no dominant trait to give you the yellow, so this one must be green. Giving you a one to two to one ratio. This right here that actually shows the genetic makeup, this is called the genotype. The color that's actually being seen in this case is going to be your phenotype. If you look at genotype and phenotype, there are particularly, this is going to be your ratio for genotype. Your phenotype ratio is going to be 3 to 1 for phenotype. You will want to follow up today with, or tomorrow at the very latest, with the second part to this video.